Hi there! Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these. Nice little puff of flame. So it's a couple of wee sections but really quite simple to do so uh, you can see what you think and uh, see if you fancy giving it a try. First of all start off with a piece of pink foam. The notorious pink foam of the terrain world. So uh, start off with that and if I am going to put my knife and what you first want to start doing is taking and working your way around the edges and trying to get a teardrop shape. It's a three dimensional teardrop. Easiest way to do it is just start working around the corners and taking the corners off and then carving chunks away at angles. And keep going that way until you get a shape that looks like this. Once you get to this place, what you want to do is take a pair of tweezers and start vandalising it. Basically lifting lumps out of pretty much everywhere on it. Just want to rough the surface up to give a, a rough rocky texture. What you, you want underneath is the, the flame is a nice sort of hot rock effect to give some depth and substance to your flame. Here we go, nice uneven rocky texture. Right, we're going to put some layers of colour on this now and this not being your average rock, this being a hot rock, we're going to be working from the lighter tone of colour up, seeing as it's nice and hot on the inside and beginning to cool on the outside. So we're going to start with some bad moon yellow nice cheap brush we don't want to be using sort of good brushes for this because it's just slapping the paint on basically and it's going to be sort of pushing the bristles in to the areas to get the paint right in so that it covers everything so obviously you don't want to be using good brushes for that try and then come back to you. Right, just popped that on a wee cocktail stick with some blue tech just to let it dry. Should have done that first mind you, I wouldn't have ended up with so much paint on me but hey, bright ideas always come after the fact. Right, now that this is dry we're going to give it a heavy dry brushing with some fiery orange. It's uh, just any light orange will do the job. And leave that to dry again. Right, now that's dry now we want to do a lighter dry brushing of a dark red. Just want to keep this to the, the real outer levels. And here we go. If you're looking to do just some molten rocks that would pass on its own, but we'll let that dry and show you what happens next. Right, next thing you're going to need is some form of synthetic fibrous material, preferably something that has some form of layer in it where you can pull it apart, a bit like cotton wool but uh, a finer fibre and dent less dense material that's not going to clump when it gets wet. 
and I'll recover once it dries again. What I've got for that was something from the pound shop. Is a snow blanket, pound each, lots of material. So we'll see where that goes. And you'll see how that pulls apart. You get ones that are made of a sort of felt material, which are no good for this. But this is like a, a fine web-like material. It's like a nylon or polyester fibre, which just spins out really finely. And you want to take and peel that into sort of layers. Let's put that out the road a second. What you want to do, as I say, is to take and peel this into sort of layers and sort of lay it out flat. That sort of level like that. And the next thing you're going to want to do is get your paints back from before. And start, like the, the rock before, start with the yellow. And you're wanting to basically take and dry brush this fabric. You will need a little, little amount of paint on the brush for this because too much and it starts clumping quite heavily. So, but too little and you won't get any colour on your fabric at all. So, you need to look on that level. Yet again, you're probably wanting to use a nice good coarse brush for it to make sure it goes through it. If it teases the, the fabric out a little bit that's absolutely fine. You also want to be making sure that you get both sides of it done so that you're not seeing any of the white left or at least not too much. A tiny bit won't make too much of a difference but it really needs to be just a tiny bit visible. You will get tufts on the brush, but don't worry too much about that either. Just peel them off. Then put that to the side to dry and on with the next one. Those aside and let them dry. Right, just like before, let's go back in with the the bright orange. Do exactly the same again, but without having to go over all of it. You just want to put a few patches of the orange on this time. Let that dry on it. Right, and as expected, on with the third colour. Yet again, you don't need a massive quantity of this. Yet again. Let's leave that to dry and then something different. Right, next thing you want to do, it looks a little bit brutal, but it has its point. Let's take and pile up all your little bits and take on a diagonal and start pulling them to pieces. Brutal, but simple. Next stage, you want the glue. Right, the glue I'm going to use is a uh, Hob E Tack adhesive by Woodland Scenics. But basically, any sort of glue that says kind of tacky once it's dry is what you're after. So, move your bits out the way while you're doing that because it will get really sticky in a minute. I'm going to use a coffee stirrer where I've cut the edge to a point just to add, apply it with because it's not a very good top inside the bottle unfortunately it's like a kid's glue pot top in the bottle 
you'll see what I mean. So, physically taken, just apply it with that instead. Now you're just wanting to catch some of the the points across it. Right, you want to take some bits. It's not sitting quite the way you want it, just pull it apart again and just realign some of it. And just on your stick. Yeah, it does look a little rough at this point, but what we want to do now is leave the glue to dry on this with this on it. And then we can set into shaping it. Right, I've taken this and I've popped it onto a GW fantasy base which I've put a long metal pin into and just gently taken and just moulded and cupped the flame into a nice flame like shape. So the next thing you're wanting to do is fix it. Now the only thing I can think of to fix it, seeing as it's quite a hairy texture, is a substance I don't use very often. I produced my bottle of 10 year old hairspray. <laughs> Hence the reason the top's been kind of oops, broken off because that's how often it gets used. It's been sitting in a cupboard for ages. So just a quick like light fix. Hey, it turns uh, weather presenters to stone. Maybe it'll work with holding flame in place. A bit pong whiffy, but that's what you expect for it and it just allows you to take the wee teasy bits out just to, to make it look like leaping flame. And leave that to dry and then you've got your, your flame. There's the one I made earlier. Now I've got two of these. Hmm, I'll need to think of a project to put these on for you to see later on. Take care everyone. enough. <laughs> Turn the camera off. <laughs>